Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. This is Ronnie Bolser. How y'all doing? Um, today's topic is Guardians of the Galaxy. And before I start, I, I'm Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, not 1. Uh, before I start, I want to apologize if you hear cats meowing in the background. Uh, my cats um, gave birth on Sunday, so there's lots of little kittens. And they make kitten noises all day. Um, and I'm sorry I haven't uh, put out one of these podcasts in a while. Um, if you want to hear more of them, uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and comment. You know, so I know you guys like these or not. Because I usually only do them with controversial movies or movies that I just really, really like. Like have a genuinely good time watching, um, yeah, um, and this one's gonna be a spoiler free one, I know the other ones weren't spoiler free, but also, it's really, really hot, and I have my window open, so if you hear any noises, uh, that's not my fault, it's just fucking hot outside, I gotta have the window open or bake in this fucking studio apartment, <laughs> you guys know how that is, though. Um, anyways, uh, it's not going to be an hour long podcast, I usually make these like three minutes, uh, not three minutes, like thirty minutes, uh, cause, I mean, who wants to fucking want, hear an hour podcast about a movie, unless you like, really like the subject matter. Um, I remember when I went to go see the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and it fucking just hit it out of the park for me. I wasn't expecting it. You know, I was like, ooh, Guardians of the Galaxy, that sounds like a fun movie to watch. And I fucking, I watched it and it's just cooking bingo, you know, just fucking hit it right out of the park. I just, I loved it. I had to go back and watch it a second time. Um, This movie had all the goodness from the first movie, Uh, same level of humor, Um, even more humor from Drax. I like that shit. Just Fucking Drax is a funny motherfucker. I love that son of a bitch. Um, more laughs from the uh, just same level. Just Star Lords is the only one that uh, didn't have as many jokes as the first one. But I I can I, I kind of understand that you know inner to- turmoil type shit. I won't spoil it. I won't spoil the movie. You know. I hope that's not a spoiler. Um, I just, uh, you know, these podcasts are to give you my basic feeling of the movie, you know, let you see, you know, it doesn't matter what I think about it, you know, I just want to share my feelings with you guys. Really good movie, overall. Um, like I said, uh, basic humor was all there, um, a lot more plot development from all the other characters, which was... Awesome. We got some more stuff with um, Gamora and her sister, which was great. Uh, that's not. No, nah, that's not spoil. Fuck you. It's not spoiling. Shut up. Um. Uh, Baby Groot. Baby Groot was fucking hilarious. They marketed Baby Groot hell good too. He was like the most marketable thing for that movie fucking ever. I loved it. <laughs> I just... And he, he's a baby, too, so he acts like a baby the entire movie, you know? Like like, like a little kid, like how a little kid would act. It's, it's, it's fucking great. I love it. They, they, they gave him a personality of a child since technically he is a child. It's like Groot was already a full-grown adult in Guardians, so he acted like an adult. But when he... I guess when his species, like comes back to life through their own fucking seeds or whatever. They they act they re go through puberty and all that shit too. It's fucking hilarious. I love it. It just it's cocking, you know, bingo. I love it. Um I didn't much care for I'm gonna say good and bad things. I didn't much care for the bad guy. Um this time around. Uh, thought his motivation was kind of dumb, 
But at the same time, I can see why. I'm not, like I said, no spoilers. Don't worry about it. Um, other than that, you know, the, uh, the movie was just great. There was one other problem I had with it, too. It really, not a very big problem with me. Well, it was a big problem for me because I wanted more. You know, I wanted to keep watching, seeing more of the movie, you know. And halfway through the movie, I was like, oh no, it's getting dangerously close to being the end of the movie. But no, I don't want it to be the end of the movie. Keep going. Keep going. I want to know. I want to keep going. And also, I was like, there's not going to be any more enemies. It's just this guy. He's the main guy. Uh, it sucked. And so not a lot of enemies. It, it was kind of like a like an in between, I would say. You know, like Guardians of the Galaxy was the first one, and then the second one's the in between movie, and then the third one's gonna be like the bomb, awesome, fantastic movie, hopefully. <laughs> um. I didn't know much lore about this movie either, you know, since Guardians, because I didn't know a goddamn thing about Guardians of the Galaxy before I watched the first movie, I, I'm not going to lie about that, I'm a comic book fan, but not that far back, I don't fucking go back to the 70s with obscure fucking uh, Guardians of the Galaxy references and shit like that, because that's where this comic book started, and I, since then, I've, I've read up on the lore, I've watched some YouTube videos about it, and I know who everybody is now. I, I know what they do and who they are. I've seen some of the cartoon shows, the Guardian of the Galaxy cartoon show, and that filled in some gaps for me too. And then they have those new running comics of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I've been reading as well, or getting recapped on. I, I don't have money to buy comic books every week like most people. Because every week they come out with new comic books, and that's like... If you wanted to get every comic book every week, it would cost you like fucking 50 to 60 bucks for every issue, you know, and that, that's a lot of money, unless you wanted to go just like strictly DC or strictly Marvel, then you're looking at like 15 bucks a week, but that, that's a lot of fucking money that I don't have money for. I usually wait till they come out with the gigantic, like, um, big books, like, here's volume one, big book, it has all these issues in it, and that, I love that, because I hate cliffhangers, too, they always cliffhanger you in those doll in those two dollar comic books, I hate that shit, but, um, like I said, since then, I've, I've, I, I know a little bit more about Peter Quill, I know a little bit more, you know, and I'm not gonna spoil the movie, but, I mean, I could talk about some of the lore, you know, Peter Quill's dad is an alien. His mom's a, a, a human. His his dad is something called a celestial, and this is from the comic books. This isn't from a fucking movie. Um, and in the actual comic book, it he's well, he's actually the son of God or 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 whatever. He's Jesus. They straight up make him Jesus in the fucking comic books, and he has all the powers of Jesus. It's crazy. <laughs> I love it, though. It's so interesting. And then, uh, as we know, Gam Gamora's Thanos' his daughter, so there's a bunch more Thanos shit going on, you know? Oh, um, man. And the jokes in the movie, too. I mean, the aliens. They There's a lot of camo aliens. We get Howard the Duck back. Uh, fucking funny-ass camo. All the guys are back, though. The blue guy's back. Thanos is back. The squirrel... The squirrel's back. The, uh... uh Groot's back. Uh... Uh, they added some new characters in. I'm not gonna spoil who those characters are because I wanted them to be a surprise to you. Um... It's just... It's so good. I love it. Um... I give it about... An... Uh... Eight out of... Eight out of ten. It's not a complete 10, because, I mean, no movie's a fucking complete 10. What movie's a complete 10? I, I dare you in the comment section to tell me what's a complete 10. No movie's a fucking complete 10. So, and if anybody tells you otherwise, they're fucking bullshitting you. But there's always something to nitpick about a movie. Um, music, for instance. Now, a lot of people have been nitpicking about this this movie, that it's it's not as musical as the other one. Uh, it doesn't have as strong as a soundtrack. I, 
didn't have a problem with it. I liked all the music in Volume 1 and Volume 2, and it's weird because I've never heard any of those songs. See, I'm a, I'm a child of the 90s. I'm 20, 26 year, 27 years old now because you know, my birthday's in March. Um, and I've never heard most of those seven songs from the... Listen, there's probably about a thousand songs, 10,000 10, songs in each fucking decade, you know? Well, 10,000 songs in the 60s, 10,000 songs in the 70s, 10,000 songs in the fucking 80s. And, you know, Peter Quill was born, or he was a little kid in the 80s or some shit, but his mom liked to play music from, like, the 60s and the 70s and shit. So most of that music I've never even fucking heard. So to hear him in this context in an a action movie, it's, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. It's just like how um, it's just like how uh, the pope, the guy, the director of Pulp Fiction, who what the fuck's his name? How he does it? He doesn't use any musical scores. He uses music from uh, from pop culture, pop culture music, and to take pop culture music like that and spin it in a new way is just fantastic. I love how he does it in his movies, and I love how they do it in the Guardian of the Galaxy movies. And most of these songs I haven't heard, so I haven't got to know them like uh, some of the older people in theaters who probably know them from their childhood or, or something like that or from their 30s or their 20s I just I fucking I love the music I've never heard that music so it, it's like eye opening genre type shit to me you know and I hope it does that for a lot of people too I hope a lot more people are op uh, get open up to a lot more musical options because of these movies because it's not only like, telling a cool, like, futuristic fucking story, but it's also just building on this relationship. Just, ah, it's awesome. I love it. Um, and the score, the people said the score from the first one is, is, is much better than the second one, but I, 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 I disagree. I, it, I think they're equal. Um, they bring some of the songs back from, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, and then they just bring a lot more, and, not only that, since, you know, Peter Quill likes to reference a lot of shit, a lot of these songs are, like, referenced as well. They actually, like, talk about some of the songs in the movie. So it gives, like, a, like this is what this song means. And, and it, they interlude it into the plot. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I love it. Because um, it, it gives you more of Peter Quill's, like, personality. And I, um, he's, like, a... I don't know. His mother loved music. It's it's like a part of him, you know. He's like a he's like a product of his, his decade. And since he doesn't know any, you think he would learn about some of this? This is the, another problem. The, the other two other problems I have <clears throat> about these movies and about Peter Quill in general. One, wouldn't you learn about off-world singers if you were off-world? Wouldn't you get turned on by? to some new, different kind of music out there in the stars, you know what I mean? Like, learn about other singers and, you know, alien singers and shit like that. You think if you were, like, stuck on a fucking pirate ship and the only thing you had was your Walkman, you'd bond with somebody else who likes music from whatever world they come from, you know what I fucking mean? Like, oh, this is Bleak Blorp from the fucking, uh, from, uh, the... The Cooter Con... <laughs> this is Bleep Bleep Warp from the Cooter Quadrant or something like that. You know what I mean? Cooter. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? He, if you're a lover of music, you would be open to other music. But he's, he's like, stuck in the decade that he left Earth in. I just... I don't understand that. And another thing... Wouldn't those tapes stop working if you listened to them so fucking much? I know I used to listen to one uh, tape uh, when I was a kid, and I fucking listened to it like, like 30 fucking times. So much that the tape just started fucking warping and stopped working. I know that tape wasn't that... That's why they everybody switched to CDs, because tape started fucking up. <laughs> um... And they were easy to fuck up, too, but I, well, CDs are easy to fuck one scratch and fucking, de but you know what I fucking mean. That's why everybody switched to digital eventually, because they're like, no, we can't break it ever. It's on this file, unless we fucking delete it somehow. And, uh, I, I don't know. 
his headphones still work too. Now everybody knows that when you buy a fucking pair of headphones, they go out in like fucking a year. There's no way this motherfucker had his headphones for like fucking 25 years and they still work. I'm calling bullshit on that right the fuck now. It's just little things like that that bother me about the movie. But the action, amazing. The powers that um, they all have and stuff. Like Drax is like a fucking big muscle man and fucking can jump into a monster's mouth and kill everything type shit, I, you know, and fucking Gamora's, like, super athletic and, and strong and trained by Thanos, and the, squ- the squirrel is, like, the tech, the tech guy, or what the fuck's his name, Ratchet? No, nah, I forget his name, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's Drax, Gamora, Peter Quill, and I can't remember the fucking squirrel's name to fucking save my goddamn life. Literally, if somebody had a gun right now, they'd be like, Save the squirrel's name, man. Like, oh, no, I can't fucking do it. Please, don't kill me. I'll suck your dick. <laughs> nah, uh, and he knows technology, so, you know, all their, like, talents and skills are all shown off in this movie. They, it was kind of an introduction in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, so you didn't get to see a lot of their skills, but they fucking, like, play it to the fucking max in this one, and I love that. Just amazing shit. And, uh... I don't know. It's just... I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. I try so hard. I can't get enough of it. Alright. Enough of that. Stop that shit. Um... Hmm... What else else can I say about this movie? That I haven't already said. Um... Visuals. Visuals are stunning. Just like the first one. Fucking... The space stuff, all that shit is it's amazing. Someone should tell them that you don't automatically freeze when you go into space, though. I don't know if they know the science behind that. Because you don't. You don't freeze in space. You just... Space is a vacuum. It's not cold or hot. It's just a vacuum. It's the absence. It's nothing. It fucking envelops you and then you just fucking choke to death. Or your lungs explode or something like that. You don't fucking freeze. It's not cold. Um, at least that's what it, I've been told through the science of it and why not. Yeah, just the visuals are fucking amazing. The things that they do in this movie are awesome. And just the way that they set it up too. Uh, I can't say anything without ruining the movie. But they like... Um, they just do... Like, different kind of choreographed things that uh, just make it, like, especially the beginning and the opening. And the op- You'll love the fucking opening. In the- if you like the opening of the first movie, you'll like the opening of the second movie way better. It's just, I love it. Um, the characters get more flushed out here. You, you just learn more about them. You learn a lot more about Peter because it's fucking basically all about Peter in this movie. But you, you learn more, a lot more about Drax, and you learn a little bit more about the relationship between Gamora and his sister. I think I've already said that. I'm sorry. I'm repeating myself now. See, li- see, this is what happens when you try to do fucking podcast for an hour. I'm just doing like my first response to oh, uh, what but then you're like, I don't know what to fucking say. Go fuck yourself. Um. I love how the, again, I said this, but I love how they marketed fucking Baby Groot. There's Baby Groot fucking toys everywhere. Even when I went to the theater, there was Baby Groot fucking popcorn heads. Like, it was Baby Groot's head, and you could fucking get popcorn out of his head and eat it. And they were like 10 bucks. That was great. I loved it. And, um, they kind of spoiled. The good thing about this movie is they didn't spoil everything in the trailer either um a lot of the jokes you see in the trailer are pretty good jokes but it's not like everything like they do with some movies which is great i genuinely did not know the plot of the entire movie before i went into um into the movie well i knew a little bit of things i knew that peter quill's dad was going to be in it I knew that there was a little bit of tension between everybody. I knew that Drax was fucking with Peter a bunch. 
um, stuff like that. And but like the whole story for this one is just pretty great. Some of it kind of sucks though because some stuff is revealed and things happen that don't get to stay till the end. Um, yeah, I can't, it's really hard to do the, <laughs> one of these podcasts without telling, I want to tell you guys so fucking much, but I told myself if I did a podcast like this again, I wouldn't give spoilers. All my other podcasts have spoilers in them, and I wanted to try to give a spoiler free one a lot harder. Probably should have made bullet points. Note to self, make bullet points. Also, try to find somebody to suck your dick. I mean, that, uh... Shh, don't tell anybody. Um... The level of jokes in this movie is fucking... just god tier, you know? The level of fucking around between each character. And there's, there's a lot of tension between each character, too. They're each trying to get each other to, like confess things and open up to each other and just be more of a family. But they don't fucking say the word family 10,000 times, like Fast and the Furious. They just say like four or five times, thank God. Fucking Jesus, Fast and the Furious. But that's a review for another time. You know, I, I said 30 minutes, but I think I'm gonna quit the podcast. Um, anyways, that's my basic impression. If you guys got anything from this podcast, it'd be awesome. Uh, go see the movie. Go see it. It's good. 8 out of 10 good. Um, and yeah. And if you want a lot more lore from these guys, and there's a lot of it out there. There's com- I urge you to go read the comic books. Uh, oops, sorry for that. Go, su- go support the comic book industry and buy some uh, Guardians of the Galaxy comic books. Um, the newer releases are just, uh, they basically give them the same personalities in the movie, and there's lots of, you know, joking around and fucking around, and, 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 and then, and Rocket Raccoon's like a, a grumpy old piece of shit, I just, I, I like it, I, I, I want more Guardians of the Galaxy, I can't wait for number three, um, anyways, I uh, hope you guys like this 20-minute uh, uh, podcast. I think from now on I'm just going to do fucking 20 minutes because who needs to say 10,000 things about a fucking movie, really? I mean, if you're going to go see it, you're really going to go fucking see it. Um, as always, uh, subscribe to my YouTube, subscribe to my VidMe, tip me on VidMe if you really, really like my content. But please, please, only if you really, really like it. <laughs> I scratched the mic just for you, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, and follow me on VidMe, and I'll, I'm also on Twitch if that's your thing. But I don't, I don't upload the podcast to the Twitch. Uh, but all my gaming stuff is on Twitch as well, because I, you know, Twitch is mainly for gaming. So why upload anything else but uh, gaming? Oh, and uh, girls who get naked. But I mean, don't tell anybody that. Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys later, and you all have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.